We're jumping into chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. The sermon I preached from this section I called Highly Charged. Paul has been saying some really big things to Timothy, calling him to finish the work of proclaiming Christ as he continues in the truth, even in the face of suffering, all in the view of the life to come. And he pulls many of those ideas together in this section. And this section is loaded with imperatives, uh, verbs that are commands, calling Timothy to do a number of very important things. And that's why I called this section highly charged, because it all revolves around this key uh, charge that Paul gives. If you've missed the videos that we've seen so far in this book of 2 Timothy, I encourage you to go and watch those videos first to help you to understand how we've got to this point in this important book. As always, I encourage you to take some time to just read the passage a number of times yourself. One of the most important tools in preparing uh, to teach God's Word is to read and reread so that you can get a, a clear idea of why this section was originally written. And through the whole process, take time to pray, to ask God to help you to understand His Word of Truth so that you can indeed teach it well to others. As I said, this section is loaded with imperatives, and they show why it is such a highly charged section. So our first important imperative is here in verse 2. So an imperative is a verb, that is a command, and this imperative, preach the word, governs all the other imperatives that we see in this section. And as we'll see, there are nine imperatives in total in this section. Here are the other ones. So nine imperatives, but as I said, this first imperative, preach the word, governs the others. You need to be prepared in season, out out of season to preach the word. You use the word to correct, rebuke, and encourage. You need to keep your head in all situations by continuing to preach the word. Uh, As you preach the word, you endure hardships because not all people want to hear this word. Doing the work of an evangelist, sharing the good news about Jesus, uh, primarily happens as you preach the word. And then this discharge all the duties of your ministry. A better translation would be uh, fulfill your ministry. And Paul wants Timothy to do this as he continues to preach the word. So just a clearer way of translating discharge all the duties of your ministry is just saying finish your work. So continue with this work of preaching the word right until the end. Don't give up on it. Now structurally we see a couple of very important things in this section. Uh, Paul introduces uh, this idea of Christ who will judge and then right at the end he speaks about the righteous judge. So far, he's spoken throughout his letters about Christ Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. So he's spoken of Jesus as the Savior. Now he brings in the idea of Jesus who will judge the living and the dead. And the important thing that we see here is that uh, this word of Jesus is the only thing that can prepare people to meet Jesus as Savior before they meet him as judge. And so this is a very highly charged section, uh, calling Timothy to continue with a very important work. As we see now, a judge brackets the section, and the idea of his appearing and his kingdom, so pointing us ahead, also brackets the section. Uh, we have this repetition of his appearing and Paul talking about uh, the crown of righteousness that would be given to him on that day. So we see this section neatly bracketed by these ideas of Jesus the judge coming, appearing on that day. Now just looking at some of what Paul says about Christ Jesus in this section, he's talking specifically about his appearing and his kingdom. Uh, He speaks about him here as the Lord, the righteous judge. It's Jesus who's going to appear again. And throughout this book, Paul has been calling Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And so here he hits those same themes again. Preach the word with careful instruction. 
And as I said just now, this discharge, all the duties of your ministry, is the idea of finishing your work. So finish the work of proclaiming Christ from uh, God's word of truth. And he speaks about this uh, word of truth in a number of ways. So careful instruction from the Bible. He speaks about it as sound doctrine. And he speaks about the truth here, but those who have turned their ears from the truth. And these teachers that he mentions are teachers who aren't teaching the truth. Another theme we've seen throughout the book is uh, the reality of uh, hardship or suffering that comes as you continue to be a preacher of the truth. And Paul is reminding him of this again as he seeks to preach the word. He will indeed suffer and he's calling him to endure through that hardship. Verse 5 here is a very important uh, section or verse for us to give our attention to. As Paul gives these four imperatives that are all things that Timothy and all ministers of the gospel and essentially all Christians uh, need to continue in as we proclaim the truth about Jesus. So although this is to Timothy, the pastor of the church, preach the word, there is the implications for all Christians to continue to tell the world of Jesus. And Paul is saying here, in order to do that, you need to keep your head. Uh, the idea there is of being sober-minded. So having a clear head, when the world around you seems to be going crazy, when we are surrounded by fanatics and unbelief, you need to have a cool head. And the way you do that is by preaching the word. All Christians are called to endure hardship. We aren't promised that life this side of eternity will be easy. And the thing that will keep us enduring through that hardship is as we remind ourselves of the truths of God's word. There is a great God. Uh, there, he, he's coming. Uh, there's a coming kingdom, a glorious hope. We have Christ Jesus, our Savior. We need to remember the gospel in order to endure hardship. He says, do the work of an evangelist. Uh, this is to continue with the work of telling the world about Jesus. That's how disciples are both made and matured. And then the final imperative here, discharge all the duties of your ministry. So finish your work. And the way you do that is by preaching the word. Never move away from this word. And he says you're going to need to do this with great patience. It's going to be for a, the long haul. Don't give up on it. And with careful instruction. We need to carefully handle God's word, which we saw at the end of chapter 3 is a handling of all scripture, not just our favorite bits. We need to be all scripture uh, believers, shaped by God's word of truth from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. And it is all scripture that needs to be preached. And we need to be prepared to do this in season and out of season. So the idea here is uh, when you're feeling up to it and also when you aren't feeling up to it. Uh, when people are wanting to listen to that truth, and when people aren't wanting to listen to that truth, you need to be prepared in season and out of season. And then also linking with what we saw at the end of chapter 3, uh, correct, rebuke, encourage. It's God's word that will show areas of our lives that need to change, that will rebuke us when necessary, and will encourage us to keep going until that day of his appearing. But now all of these truths are framed under verse 1 where he says, in the presence of God, saying, remember that you do this work in the presence of God, the Lord God Almighty. In a sense, it's only his verdict that matters. Everything that we do is done remembering that there is a great God who gives us glorious hope because of our salvation through Jesus and all the work that we do, everything we do in our lives is done in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge. So remembering that there's a day of judgment coming and the only people who will stand on that day of judgment are those who have been saved by Jesus so that they won't stand and face him as judge who will condemn them because of their sins. But only those whose sins have been saved by Jesus will be able to stand on that day of judgment. 
So in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, the king's coming, he's coming to judge, hold tightly to this, feel the weight of this, and then listen to this charge, preach the word. And why is this so important? Verse 3, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. I uh, just, I think it's important to note that this time has come. We're not still waiting for some future day. This time had come in Timothy's day already. There were people who were teaching false truths. They weren't putting up with sound doctrine or, or healthy teaching. But instead, to suit their own desires or their own uh, passions. And the sense of this word is uh, often linked with immoral or sinful, often sexual desires. Uh, so in order to suit their own desires, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers. So it's people who are preaching, but they're not preaching the word. They're preaching whatever people's itching ears want to hear. So uh, we see a lot of itchy ear preaching happening in our world today. And Paul is saying this type of teaching won't prepare people for Christ who's coming as judge uh, this type of preaching they need to remember is done in the presence of God who is going to judge. And these teachers will face judgment. The tragedy is those under their teaching won't be prepared to meet Jesus as Savior because they are turning their ears away from the truth and turning aside to myths. Another way of translating that word myths in our context would be fairy tales. So these teachers teach about a fairy tale Jesus rather than Jesus the judge who's coming, but who's also Jesus the saviour, who is their only hope on that day of judgment. And so, but you, don't be like these guys. Don't move away from sound doctrine. Don't just do itchy ear preaching. Don't preach fairy tales. Rather stick to the truth, but you keep your head. Preach the word, which is all about God's plan of saving people through Jesus. Endure hardship. It's going to be hard. It would be much easier to just tell people what their itching ears want to hear. It would be much easier to make up your own fairy tales than to stick to this truth. So endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Continue to point people to Jesus who came into the world to save them. And finish your work. Don't give up. Continue at it till the end. So Paul gives this highly charged section and he says here, and do it till the end, finish your work. And then he points to his own example as somebody who has already done that. Paul says, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. Now you can go and read up a bit more about a drink offering in a number of places in the Old Testament. Exodus 29 is one passage where you can go and read up about that. And you see the drink offering was offered at the end of, of the sacrifice, the final aspect of the sacrifice. Now, Paul himself, if you go to Romans 12, he spoke about his own life being lived as a living sacrifice. And now the idea of his life being poured out like a drink offering, it's the end of the sacrifice. His life being offered to God for his glory is now coming to an end. And he says that the time for my departure is near. The specific word for departure has uh, the nuance of departing for home. It's like, I'm on my way home. And he then said, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. If you go and look uh, back to chapter 2 again, in chapter 2 from verse 4, we see Paul speaking about uh, calling Timothy to suffer for the gospel like a good soldier, like an athlete, like a hardworking farmer. And here he points back to those images that he used. And he says, I've done that. Like a good soldier, I've fought the good fight. Like an athlete running for Jesus, I've finished the race as he's preached the word. He's kept the faith, just like a, a farmer trusting the crops to come. He's kept the faith. And then he says, and now is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. So he knows he's heading home. And he's going to face the Lord, the righteous judge, but he's, he knows that he's going to receive this crown of righteousness. He's not going to stand before that judge uh, with dread, but with great joy, because 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save a sinner like him, and he was now going to meet Christ Jesus and be with him forever. And he says this isn't only true, this crown of righteousness isn't only coming uh, to people like him, but to everyone, all, who have longed for his appearing. All those who have waited for that day when Jesus is going to return to make all things new, he's saying they'll all receive the crown of righteousness. And so he's calling Timothy in this big section to continue with this work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, feel the weight of this. He's coming, his kingdom's coming, feel the weight of this. I charge you, preach the word. And do this right till the end. Finish the work. It's not always going to be easy, but finish the work. Preach the word. Keep your head. Keep telling people about King Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. Because only this word about Jesus can prepare people to be ready to meet Jesus as Savior before they meet him as judge. And so just like Timothy, we need to be looking for teachers in the church who will continue to preach the word. And will prepare those in their church to continue in this truth as they finish the work that God has prepared for them as they wait for that day when they'll receive the crown of righteousness which has been secured by Jesus for all those who have loved him and longed for the day that he appears. It really is an incredible section to dig into so rejoice in the truths that are revealed here, the truths about a judge whose kingdom is coming, he's going to appear, who we have the privilege of standing before without fear if we've been saved by Christ Jesus and we need the world to know about him. So continue to preach the word. Point people to Jesus so that they will be ready to meet him as savior before they meet him as judge. Well, God bless as you dig in further.